Hello everybody and welcome to episode 9 of my tutorial series for Songs of Six. In the last episode we have expanded the service grid of the city and today we're going to get all these things that we've prepared in the last episode into motion. So we have a new lab, we have a new canteen that's looking gorgeous and making people super happy. We right now suffer a little bit more building degradation as I like it to see but that was mostly because the janitor was uh, lacking furniture to repair stuff. I really, really hope that it'll come together now over the course of the time. If not, we'll just add in more, um, more janitorial power. That's just what we're going to do. Anyways, so the first things that we need to get further down the road are now metal and cut stone. These two materials are mandatory for further um, progression. And as you see here, the metal smelter technology is only 250 tech points, and the masonry technology is also only 250 tech points. These are dirty cheap because they operate basically... Well, you can't do much without these techs. Let's just put it down like that. So what we're going to do again here is we're going to set on up a crate for ore. And, uh, well, I think we don't need much more than that. So it's really disturbing for me to see how, how degraded those buildings are, but it's all going to be. So the smelter. Um, the smelter is quite easy as long as it has ore. Without ore, it's useless. That's the first thing that we have to uh, pinpoint here. So we're going to make this place happen on over here. There we go. I do draw this a little bit smaller than I usually do, because I already know that we're not going to have a huge, gigantic uh, workshop here. So, there we go. But it's going to be large enough to uh, accommodate 30 people around that. It, it really depends on how much uh, ore you have in your city available. I personally think a 30 worker workshop is more than enough for the average city that has to import the majority of its ore. If you have huge mines and the like in your city, it's, uh, it's most of the time a tad bit different. And if you check this out, the smelter is also very, very uh, forgiving in terms of resources. And here's one thing that I really want to uh, mention here. We could have went down this road a lot earlier. It's really hard for me to put things into a uh, into a meaningful order here, but as you see here, resource-wise, the, the metal smelter is not really uh, demanding or anything. It's, uh, it's really easily set up, and basically you can get yourself one import depot, or that ore and you're ready to go and then you can smelt that stuff the thing is metal imports are much much costier than ore imports but at times it is just like uh, like it is also i didn't want to uh, well I, I didn't see this as a fitting uh, move for the tutorial series i just wanted to mention that so i really don't know why our janitors are not tending this place here it's uh bothering me quite a lot so since that's so much of a trouble for me we're going to do something about that don't you don't you worry so for now i'm importing a total of 50 ore and as you see there this is uh i have a big i have big plans with, with that all right so we're uh, we're importing for 48 per unit but here's one fun thing, um, we could sell that stuff for not that much, so really only only import in, in such ways if the stuff you really need, you know. It's, it requires very high bartering technologies to, uh, to make it profitable to, rese to, to buy and re resell processed goods. So I'm going to use the blunt force uh, t technique here and just slapping in a janitor right into the area where it's uh, looking horrible at. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. All right, so of course we are now not really able to fully utilize the metal smelter because by no means we don't have enough money 
to import as much ore as it would require to um, <clears throat> to let a, a workshop of that size run permanently. Sure, but the thing is, all the ore that will get imported will get processed here, and that's already on its own a very, very useful thing. Also, keep, uh, keep an eye out here. I don't recruit too many people here anymore, even though they are stockpiling. That's because I really feel like as long as everything's working on out as intended, I don't want to have more people. You know, the more people I got, the more services I need. The more people I got, the more food I need. And the list goes on and on. Oh yeah, here's one beautiful thing. Mm, this worksite here is taking somehow forever, even though we have all the resources. If that happens, that's most of the time because the uh, logistics are growing larger and more demanding. Haulers do help you here. We're going to set on up one hauler, two hauler, and then we're going to... Fast forward until they are set up. Takes a moment, I know. Well, we don't have enough uh, odd jobbers here. So instead of accepting all of the immigrants this time, I'm going to authorize only 10. And uh, this way, the uh, it's not that much of an insane impact on the city's uh, situation. There we go. Now the folders get built. And now we uh, configure them. So this guy is supposed to carry stone. This guy is supposed to carry... Ah, it ain't, it ain't built yet. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, this guy is supposed to carry wood. And what they're doing now, they're carrying the necessary building materials right next to the uh, work site. And that makes it a lot easier and faster to build those things. So, here we go. The haulers can also be adjusted size-wise uh, with uh, plus and minus here, or Q and E. So, make them as uh, accordingly large as your uh, building site is going to be. And as you see there, now things are moving on up. And also, you notice we have an insane amount of available workers here. That's because of the service situation that has vastly improved. So, that's a great thing for us. And there we go. So, here, everything's built and ready. You can go now here, delete room, and your warehouse monkeys will then carry the stone and the wood back home. And uh, that's the whole deal settled. There we go. So... Yay, the metal smelter, we're not going to employ 36 people here, of course. We're going to employ five here. We don't need that many. And uh, there we go. So at the same time, we have a new building that consumes coal. Let's bring up more charcoalers at the same time. And it's also a good time to bring up more woodcutters. Let's get that workshop to full uh, to full capacity. And now we're picking up the entirety of these people. Now we can use all those. And now it's going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride due to that. But uh, we're going to get there. So first off, 10 more scientists because we need. And the next thing that I want to take care of is now making sure that we have enough food because that's one thing that I'm absolutely positive about is we don't we won't produce enough food right now. With all those people that we've picked up, the food production won't last. So uh, we're going to employ five more bakers, and I feel like going for another fishery here. There we go. So let's see. Um, yeah, this is a good strip here. Let's pick that up. This one here is a little bit worse, so we're going to skip on that area entirely. Let's do this. So, here we go again. A small part of the fishery will be on land, and the rest of the area I just draw my grid across the shore until I'm not allowed to anymore, basically. And as you see there, you can, you can go quite far. And here I'm stopping. I'm, I'm just gonna grab 
some more of the squares up here because I, I feel like that uh, crossing here, that little crossing here, <clears throat> I might use that later. So we're, we're not going to use that here. So this fishery has enough room for 22 workers. We did a great job here. And let's uh, fill it up with auxiliaries so people are going to be working at maximum efficiency here. All right, so the beautiful good news behind all that is we won't require any metal anymore from outside sources. So let's stop importing that right away. Boom. No more metal imports because we're producing that by ourselves. <clears throat> And the good news about that is we're going to spend a lot less money now because metal imports are 98 per piece and ore is just half the price. So right there, we have cut our costs by 50%. Amazing. But at the same time, we now have to keep a keen eye out on our, uh, on our coal stockpiles because, you know, there's one bad thing about charcoaling. It ain't too effective. It ain't too efficient. And that's just... Uh, just the trouble with it. So, uh... Why on earth doesn't, doesn't this room get uh, repaired? So this looks a tad bit buggy to me. Send help. If somebody knows why the hell that's happening, please let me know. Because I surely don't know. Sadly. So, there we go. Let's see how many scientists can we put on up here. We have 20. Alright. I seriously don't understand. Oh, oh, look at that. It's getting repaired now. Alright. Brilliant. <clears throat> Looks like the janitors were just overworked so far. And... If you notice that, we got a tremendous amount of extra workers flowing to our city now. There's still a plus 13 available, even though I have just accepted a wild bunch of new people there. So, uh, situation is right. It is quite positive. There's some new homelessness occurring now. I bet that's going to be at the Fisher's place. For some odd reason, the game sometimes takes its time until it realizes where... Ah, no. It's actually the herders and uh, the the warehouse people and the bakery people. All right. So and sometimes you just have to wait for the game to catch on up with the <laughs> with what happened there. I I feel like sometimes the game just uh, needs a moment to figure out where the homelessness is actually occurring. So. There we go. Let's put that down here. I tried to put down my housing as far away from the uh, noisy um, workshops as possible because that's just uh, pissing off your people if you don't respect that. Righty, so let's see. That, that strip of housing should do well. Great. So... Food stockpiles are uh, are going up positively again, but I gotta say I have I have put this uh, fishery here up um, with its uh, with with all the workers there, so we have a really really huge improvement there, and we doubled the amount of bakers. So all in all, I'd be I would have been surprised if it wouldn't have worked on out at the end of the day. Okay, so let's check out where the homelessness is still occurring. So. White buildings are not inhabited yet, so... Alright, situation is fine. Now then, um, the fruit farm could require more farmers. And, well, the veg farm is fully stocked. The grain farm could require more farmers. So, um, let's increase that potential here as well. You might already notice that I'm right now working a lot on subsistence of our city. So, uh... I'm really working hard to, to produce more food and, and all because it's at this point it's really really important that we go down that way. I'm increasing the amount of total knowledge as hard as I can and now it's uh, it's service time again you know it's that time of the year again. 
You notice we don't have enough stages. They are hitting the 60% mark once more. So we're going to do ourselves a favor and build ourselves a bandstand this time. A bandstand requires some cut stone, but by all means we should be able to provide that by now. And uh, a bandstand also provides much more service than the stage. So let's put up a bandstand around here at the corner. Why not? I like that. This is going to bind eight workers again, so it's uh, quite a heavy investment. And we also have to... Uh, oh no, we have a cut stone in, in import already. Ha! I love it when I'm ahead of myself. So... Here, of course, again, net negative workers. So we're going to unemploy some of those fruit farmers. It worked out without them quite well before. And the trick is quite simple. Once that stage is going to provide services for real, the... Uh, amount of happiness in the city will rise again so right now my main my main concern and my main intent is around building up enough science to get myself uh, further forward we are now slow scale producing metal which is amazing you know right now also well let's check it out this place here is producing so far 77 units of steel this year so you notice that we are producing quite large amounts of that. The sad thing about that is though, well, let's see, we've consumed, you transform ore and metal in a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. So it's totally not feasible to sell that stuff where we would be destroying our own income. We would need to mine out the ore out of the mountain by ourselves to uh, gain some profit out of that. So, we gotta get there first. On the bright side, though, that means we totally can tune down our amount of uh, smelter people that work here. I think two people will be totally enough. That's a little bit ridiculous to see that we have that in Titanic uh, workshop here, but I don't really care. I won't judge either. So, let's get on over to our housing screen. Um, in the last episode, I have allocated a lot of uh, fabric to our people. We almost have enough fabric for the entirety of the city. Well, not quite enough though. So, well, we need a little bit of a larger stockpile to make that happen. When I'm assigning stuff to my housing, I'm, I'm really conservative with that because this can backfire so darned easily. All right, let's check it out. The stage fulfillment is slowly growing, very, very slowly, but it is slowly growing again. So that's a good, that's a piece of good news. And I'd say we're going to work on the service uh, here. So just like I have prophesized in the last episode, I'm going to pick up a lavatory for the area down there, just because they need it. This is going to be the artisan's uh, quarter after all, so we can. It, it's best we provide some proper um, infrastructure there as well. We would make a lot of people here happier as well if we put up a canteen down here, for example, too. So let's uh, check on out here. We zoom out. So a lot of people would love to have a canteen over here too and down here too so uh we're we're going to focus on these things during uh, the next couple of episodes now it's now really a lot about providing the services that your city needs and uh, providing them on point and hitting yourself into slow-mo you know you can kill yourself or your your city's development quite easy by just growing too fast into certain directions here we're uh well the food situation looks quite stable we're earning ourselves some money i got all the ore i i got all the ore i require and all in all our situation is super stable and really really nice so the next big steps to work towards to is producing enough um, fabric here. So let's see, our yearly production is 764. 
So if we check this out, this means we have more than enough to allocate this. So let's do this. Here we go. So this will make our citizens a lot happier. I just checked on out that we have enough yearly production of uh, fabric, so it doesn't uh, destroy my my city, you know. And check this out. Here we go. It's looking a lot more lively now, doesn't it? And uh, and the moment this happened, you see there's uh, here an explosion of happiness. That's uh, also because the um, healthcare need is getting higher again. All right. So it looks like the physician's place is finally uh, repaired again. So oh, we are on negative workers. So let's just bring all the people in. Why not? food situation is totally positive at this point. That's all the farmers we have employed. The more farmers, the more food. Quite a simple equation, isn't it? So definitely we'll bring up more fruit farmers there as well. But first, let's make sure that our workers have a place to, to do their business at. So the next step here is now to provide a source of cut stone. So masonry, we already, we've already unlocked that. So let's just wait for the lavatory to be done. It's all a matter of furniture. We're definitely going to bring up more carpenters in the future, promise. But right now we just cannot afford it. And here we go. So the stonecutter's place. Uh, it's not that much of a big difference. By now you might have noticed that Oh, sorry, it's masonry. Um, by now, you might have noticed that there is a, there is a certain system to all these things, and uh, they are all like uh, behaving behaving quite similarly. So I'm going to do this like that. I feel like uh, melding these two workshops with uh, with each other. Ah, oh, well, I'm not. I keep them distanced from each other quite uh, quite often because this makes it easier to copy paste them and. Uh, I like to copy paste my workshops, what can I say? Here we go. So, same procedure as over there, but the amount of room this uh, workshop needs is a little bit more demanding, so we're... Well, we're going to leave it like that. Here again, I'm not making this workshop too large. Same reasoning as I had with the other, um, with the smelter. I won't have a huge amount of... Uh, suspend that. I won't have a huge amount of stone that will need to be, get cut at the end of the day. So I don't want this job to be fulfilled at this point, because I don't have the furniture for that. And I already know how it goes. If we don't have the furniture for that, our dudes will uh, will not um, will not do their gen touring anymore. And uh, been there, done that. Let's be smarter than that. So, also noticeable, we are quite low on building materials, but that comes as no surprise at all, because I am churning out buildings like a madman right now. So our um, our woodcutter can't keep up at by all means. It ain't just it just ain't coming together. But that's okay. So housing, we're going to bring up some houses over here, just so we have some residential area here. There we go. Always keeping them out of the noise radius to keep your people as happy as possible. And uh, let's check out how many carpenters are working there. I remember that I uh, lowered the amount a while ago, but here we are actually working with 10 people. I hate I hate furniture. So we're going to do as follows. We're, we're just going to buy that furniture. I'm rich, so let's import 100 pieces of furniture because my local economy can't keep up. I personally love to do that because it's uh, a pretty cool way to get the ball rolling there. And I think right now we are we are consuming more metal per year than we are actually producing. And I, that ain't really a good thing, is it? So let's let's bring up the, the amount of the amount of smelter people again. 
and now we can activate that job. I just wanted to make sure that we have furniture in our stockpile so the janitors don't go crazy again. Right on. So here we have another of these uh, fun problems. Our city doesn't produce rock on its own. We only have gatherable rock. We also don't have any rock de deposits here. We, we cannot uh, put up a quarry or anything at some point to, to do that. But that ain't the end of the day. It's uh, really not that much of a big deal. We're going to get there, promise. The thing is, there's two things we can do. For one, we can use the clear rock command and just gather the hell out of what's lying around here. And believe me, there's a lot of, a lot of rocks lying around here. And the other thing is we can then later down the road work with either taxes or import that rock. More about that later. So here we see the masonry has the same issues as we had before. Materials take a while to be uh, transported there. We could have averted that with uh, haulers, but it's okay. So what's happening to our people here? They are unhappy because their preferred food is empty. Unhappiness is rising now because our dudes have eaten up all the veg. Could you believe that? So, the easiest way to alleviate that problem is to press a left shift and start to copy that. So, here's one thing. I want to find a spot that's probably not that forested, but, oh, well, never mind. This one's good. We're going to, I have realized where I'm going to put up my forestry instead. <laughs> so here, that's going to be the next veg farm. That's going to bind 30 people again, but uh, you know, it's really not good if that happens. So let's check out if we have a wrong configuration with the exports. Always worth checking on out. We're not exporting veg at all, so... Yeah, it's just hungry, hungry Cretonians. There we go. So we can fast forward that now. Part of the next year's harps will then be used for that. And here again, by all means, don't don't be silly guys. We can work with five masons for now, that is. And the cool part now is we can there go here and stop the imports of cut stone altogether as well. Wonderful. So that's the point where our city is actually really, truly self-sufficient. We got now what we need to proceed on, all, uh, on forward. The only things we don't provide for ourselves are all the necessary raw materials, some advanced goods we are still uh, importing. Oh, there's somebody starving. Sure. Sometimes people are starving and you don't know why but most of the time that's only happening if they're locked in somewhere okay this guy just had the longest butchering uh, job of his life whatever that was not the point so here as you see situation is a little bit unstable people can use again more services oh my god they ah here the stages here important thing building more stages won't help us here at all we need better stages now to make the to fulfill that meter. Sixty-six percent is the top top amount with that low quality of entertainment. What we are able to get ourselves the most uh, um, value out of, ugh, it would be another canteen that would do the most of the uh, that would do the most for us. So let's copy one of those and put up a canteen down here at the artisan's uh, quarter. So let's pause that. And here we ain't got the necessary pottery for that. And since we just got raided again, we're going to suspend that job right away. I just wanted to have that in planning. So the next big thing is going to be research-wise, not any of the new services, but the upgrade of our labs. Because Upgraded labs are now just the thing we need. So the labs can now be upgraded with 
Furniture, cut stone, and metal. That's the reason why I brought up all these productions like I did. Because I already knew what we're getting ourselves into. So with these materials available, we're going to be upgrading our labs. And that'll just, uh, well, you can already imagine what that'll do. It's just going to improve them all over the board. But to make that happen, well, 50% upgrade, by the way. We'll have to work on that a tad bit. Sadly, oh man, I'm so sad that the Raiders keep, uh, keep pissing us off here, but, well, it is as it is. So another thing that I'm realizing here, our pasture is at full capacity now. That means we are producing livestock. Livestock is another thing that I personally love to export ASAP, because livestock is super costly, like, seriously, you can earn a lot of money with that. And it's also um, expiring quite, quite fast. So a little bit wrong, but whatever. You get the idea. So the gist of it for me is when you're not actively building up new pastures, by all means, go on and export these beasties because it really pays off. You earn a lot of money with your, uh, with your pastures. And therefore, we definitely will sell off our entire livestock for, for the time being. Because you see, there is so much money. This will get us, uh, get us out of our debt in no time. I mean, at the same time, be aware that this is the production of five years or so. But at the same time, it'll help us so much. Alrighty, so that's the end of today's episode. Next one, you know what's going to be up there. We're going to upgrade those labs and see what we can do then. The next steps after the lab upgrades will be bathhouses and tombs, because that will be the, the, the real next big level for our city. But more about that when the time has come. Thanks for watching this, everybody. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the show. And of course, consider subscribing. Also keep in mind, there is a playlist down there in the link below. And uh, you can't, or in the description box, sorry, wording. That that veggie farm confused me. That's, that's the people to blame. And uh, yeah, playlist link is down there. Support links are down there as well. Check them out if you'd be so kind. I'd be super happy. Have a wonderful day until then, and see you guys next time.